My name is Cyril Lachelle, and you're watching YOLO, the only show that's guaranteed to end in heartbreak. I'm taking the challenge to play every game with a you-only-live-once sort of attitude. In this case, literally. I'll play exactly one life of every game, seeing just how far I can make it in a single turn. Friday marked the Super Nintendo's 22nd birthday, so I thought it might be fun to look back at a personal favorite launch game, F-Zero. Released at the same time as Final Fight, Super Mario World, and SimCity, F-Zero was the definitive showpiece game for Nintendo 16-Bitter. It has an exhilarating sense of speed, and the Mode 7 scaling and rotation just couldn't be matched at the time. So let's go ahead and push start and see how far I can make it on a single life. Unlike most racing games of the era, F-Zero allowed a choice of vehicles, each with their own pros and cons. For the sake of this YOLO episode, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the most balanced craft, the Blue Falcon. As we all know, this particular vehicle is piloted by the one and only Captain Falcon. Alright, we're going to start with Mute City. This is the first of three different Mute City levels in F-Zero. This game is split up into 15 different stages, uh, different, different courses, um, across three different leagues. We're probably not going to see all 15. It's been a really long time since I've played this game, so chances are we're only going to see two or three different stages. But I'm just going to keep going until I get a game over, or at least until I, I lose a, a race. Now, I want to stay out of this rough patch. That's what I, that's what I want to do. That's going to keep my speed down. I also don't want to hit the, the side of the course, but if I do, I can go right here and get some more, some more help. F-Zero doesn't play like most racing games. Not just racing games back then, but even racing games now. You see, you have two brake buttons. Uh, you use the two shoulder buttons on the, the top of the Super Nintendo controller. Uh, you can brake left and right. This actually allows you to uh, turn around corners and, and maneuver uh, pretty seamlessly. It, it's a pretty elegant... Uh, system once you get that once you get the hang of it unfortunately I haven't played this game in a long time so we'll see how well I adjust to this I'm, I'm pretty good at, at wipeout now and that uses a very similar similar style at the time I had never seen anything quite like quite like this game um, up until that point I had played you know rad racer and a lot of other you know faux 3d style racing games but none of them None of them could match what this game was, was going after. They, the, the Mode 7 really, really made a difference. It actually felt like I was in control, even though I'm going exceedingly fast in, in most of these stages. And this is just the first league. By the, the end of the game, we're really, really buzzing. Unfortunately, uh, even though the Mode 7 was impressive, uh, looking back at it now, you can see some of the limitations. Uh, this is a very, very flat course. That's something that games that, that would later be inspired by this, by F-Zero, uh, would take into consideration. You can go back and look at, uh, at Wipeout, for example, and there are all sorts of hills, and, and that really makes a, makes a big difference. As we go through these laps, you're going to notice that we don't actually need to come in first. In fact, we only need to be in the top three, so even if I come in third in any of these, it's not going to matter too much. Thankfully, it doesn't look like that's going to be much of an issue going forward. Here we are, ranked first. Uh, this is the final lap. Uh, we're only two minutes into this, uh, so these laps are really short. We've got to look out for that guy. That guy will explode. All right, and now for the final straightaway, we'll get to the... All right, first place. Well, that's... It's just as easy as that. All right, let's go ahead and look at what we got here. Uh, two minutes and 23 seconds. I'm 100% sure that's a new world record if you don't look it up. Next up is The Big Blue, not to be confused with the 1988 movie by uh, Luc Besson starring Jean Reno and Rosanna Arquette. I'm pretty sure that was the movie about the guy who could stay underwater a really long time. Not as compelling as The Fifth Element, but I have that soundtrack on cassette. Right, so this level introduces us to a few more obstacles, including a, an icy surface that will make us slip and slide. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. As you'd expect, Nintendo did attempt to capitalize on the success of F-Zero, though they didn't do it on the Super Nintendo. They waited until the Nintendo 64 with F-Zero X. Uh, there was also an expansion pack, the F-Zero X expansion pack, which only came out in Japan. That was the uh, that was for the Nintendo 64 DD, and it allowed you to 
to actually build your own tracks and save them and whatnot. I, we have a review of it on Defunct Games. You can take a look. A couple years later, the uh, GameCube got their own uh, their own F-Zero game, GX. There was an arcade game, AX. Uh, and years later, we found out that you could play the AX stuff in GX. It's just hidden uh, behind a, a, a lengthy code. Unfortunately, none of those games actually play anything like this 16-bit game. They're, they're way too fast, and they're chaotic, and there's a whole sorts of stuff going on. And I just, as much as I love this style of racing, they just don't do, they don't do anything for me. Uh, though, Nintendo did release uh, three Game Boy Advance sequels that are very much in line with, with this 16-bit style. There was Maximum Velocity, which came out uh, fairly early in the Game Boy Advance's uh, life. I believe that was actually first generation. And then years later, not until 2004, did we here in the, the U.S. get F-Zero GP Legend. Uh, and by that point, most of us had already bought a Nintendo DS or were playing the, the PlayStation 2 and gearing up for, uh, for the, the next generation systems. And then, in Japan, they released F-Zero Climax, which never even came over here in the, to the U.S. And since 2004, we haven't seen another F-Zero game. It's just been dormant, and it doesn't look like it's coming back anytime soon. And that's a shame, because there are a lot of us that would rather see a new F-Zero game than another Mario Kart. All right, here we are in the final lap, which doesn't give me a whole lot of time to talk about the Blue Falcon's vehicle we're driving. Did you know that the term Blue Falcon is actually a derogatory term used in the military? It's the person who ditches their work on other people and, and only looks out for themselves. Speaking of Captain Falcon, did you know that his ship, the Falcon Flyer, has never actually appeared in an F-Zero video game? It made its video game debut in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Alright, and that's another first place finish. On to the next race. Let's see how we did. All right, two minutes and 33 seconds. That's not too bad. From Big Blue to Sand Ocean. I guess this is a pretty good time to point out that F-Zero takes place in the distant future. 2560 to be exact. Unless I'm forgetting something, that makes this the most futuristic game we've looked at in all of the episodes of YOLO. And for those keeping track, this game is set more than 500 years past any of the Wipeout events. The critics were wowed by F-Zero's ambition, giving it among the highest scores of any Super NES launch title. The various Electronic Gaming Monthly editors gave the game 9s, and Nintendo Power scored the game 4 out of 5. Weirdly, the usually easy-to-please Game Pro came out on the low side, awarding F-Zero a middling 3 out of 5. Nobody minded that this was a single-player-only game. So that was the first lap, which means that this event is double the size of the first two. This course is not just longer, but it's actually substantially harder. These corners are making it easy to steer right into the walls. I'll be lucky if I make it out of the sand ocean. I always felt like it would be fun to have an F-Zero Star Fox crossover. Sort of like how Diddy Kong Racing had Mario Kart action and, and airplanes. It seems like the two would fit together and you could make Star Fox into an outer space racing game pretty easily. It might even be a way to rejuvenate both of the struggling franchises. Just, just an idea. Oh, I need to stop talking and actually pay attention to the road. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it here. All right, there should be a health thing coming up here. All right, there we go. Oh no, oh no, no! Oh. Well, folks, it looks like I oversteered a little bit. That was embarrassing. That was not good. And that's gonna bring us to the end of another episode of YOLO. The good news is that you got to see three of the 15 stages. There's still plenty of game for you to discover if you decide to go back and, and play F-Zero. And heck, maybe you'll even do better than me. Thank you for watching, and hey, don't forget that we do new episodes every Thursday and Sunday. You should also subscribe and check out all the other shows that we have going on, including Black Sheep and Review Crew, and then this week we have a new episode of Instant Expert. You won't want to miss that. Let me know what game you'd like to see me play next, and until then, you'll have to live with yourself. <laughs>